In this final movie, we will finish our discussion of the behavior of sample means. In particular, we will investigate these two related questions. What conditions guarantee a normal distribution of sample means, and what is the impact of sample size? Now, from our previous investigations, we know that when a variable is normally distributed in the population, sample means will also be normally distributed. So for this investigation, we will look at a population with a skew. Here we have the commute times for individuals living in a small town in Florida. This data comes from the 2000 U.S. Census. We can see that commute times are skewed to the right, with a mean of 25 minutes and a standard deviation of 20 minutes. In the graph, I have marked the mean and a standard deviation below and above the mean. I will do this in all the distributions in this movie to give us a quick visual representation of center and spread, but my dialogue is going to focus on the shape. Now, in the first sampling, I'm going to use a small sample size of 5. I'm doing this to see whether or not the sample means will be normally distributed even for small samples, or whether the distribution will look more like the distribution of commute times for individuals in the population and be skewed. Now, before I animate the simulation, let's just double check that we understand what we see on the screen. Here you will see each individual sample. Each sample will contain five individuals who have been randomly selected from the population. The blue line will indicate the mean of these five individual commute times, and you will see the sample mean recorded in blue. Each sample mean will be graphed above and in this way we will generate the sampling distribution of sample means. So I'm going to animate the simulation now, but it's going to go pretty quickly since we're used to this kind of thing. I want you to notice that the simulation is running two important things that I've already mentioned. Each sample has five people in it, and for each sample we're calculating a sample mean. Sample means are being collected above, and in this way we're generating the sampling distribution. Now pause the movie and do two things. One, predict the shape of the sampling distribution, and two, check your understanding of concepts presented previously by predicting the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Let's see what happened. Did you predict correctly? It looks like the sample means when we use five people per sample have a skew to their distribution. We also can see that the mean of the sample means should be about 25. It actually was 24.6 when I calculated it. The standard deviation of sample means should be about 8.9 according to theory. It was about 8.7 when I actually calculated it. Now we're going to see what happens as we increase the sample size. All right, now we're going to increase the sample size to 30 individuals. Again, I'm going to animate the simulation pretty quickly. What you will see is groups or samples of 30 individuals being collected. For each sample, again, we are calculating a sample mean, and sample means are graphed above. In this way, we're going to generate a second sampling distribution of sample means. The difference is, of course, each sample now is larger. Each sample contains 30 people. Now pause the movie again and we want you to do what you did previously. We want you to predict the shape of the sampling distribution and also check your understanding of previous concepts by predicting the mean and the standard deviation. Let's see what happened. I collected thousands of samples and each sample had 30 people in it. You can see by looking here at the graph that the sample means are again centered at 25 and the standard deviation has decreased to only 3.7. Here's the actual standard deviation and mean calculated from the sample means. Now of course what we're interested in is the shape. Notice that the shape looks normal. Here I've graphed the same sampling distribution but I've spread out the x-axis so that we can see the shape better. I have used a mathematical model to graph the normal curve, and we can see that the normal curve fits the sampling distribution well. In fact, a normal curve looks like it would be a good probability model here. The area under the curve gives a pretty good approximation of the frequency of sample means. What a relief! We've seen that if we increase the sample size to 30, sample means will be normally distributed.